Welcome to the project kickoff. You're going to be creating a Monte Carlo study of the effects of forest tree density on forest fire spread. And this is a screenshot from the GUI part of the, the project framework I'm going to give you. Um, your eventual research goal is answering this question. How does tree density influence the effects of a single point, point origin forest fire? Um, and your eventual goal is not to produce a beautiful picture of fire spreading across trees. Um, your eventual goal is to write a short paper the way that you actually would if you were making a study. Um, so like we did with the other Monte Carlo problems, your eventual output is going to be a data table where you have tree density as your independent variable and some other variable that you're interested in, such as what percentage of the forest burned as your dependent variable. So your code is going to output you know, just a data table where we'll have like 5% tree density, 10% tree density, 15% tree density, all the way up to 100% tree density, and then percent of the forest burn. So if we have very few trees, we would expect a very low percentage of the forest to burn. If we have a whole lot of trees, we would expect a lot of the forest to burn. Um, but what's that relationship look like? That's your research goal. So once you have your data table, like we did before, you can paste it into Desmos to create a graph, a bunch of graphs probably, where this will be tree density, this will be percent forest burned, and the question is, you know, what, here's your data table, it's so like what's that relationship look like? Is it linear, is it quadratic, is it something else? All right, so you're going to learn a whole, you're going to be combining a whole lot of different skills for this project, both technical skills and also really important uh, just project management skills, which are useful kind of no matter what type of project you want to do. Um, the simulator that you're going to write should allow experiments in the same way that we have before. So you should be able to, to create a forest with a desired tree density, set a fire at a random location, let that fire spread until all the trees are burned out, and then when it's done, record some important things about what happened during the simulation. Maybe how long it took, how many time steps, what percent of the forest burned, etc. Um, and then at the end, you'll write up this two-page experimental report where you'll report your research goals, the methods that you used. Um, and I don't mean this in terms of like what, what methods in Java. This is more like a scientific study. What was your process? The results and then a discussion and unanswered questions and future directions and an appendix with your actual code. And this is pretty standard when you're going to write a scientific paper. And I'll give you some examples of other scientific papers that use Monte Carlo as, an exam as, as their kind of research methodology. So you're, like I said before, your main result is going to be a data table and or some graphs showing the relationship between tree density and something else. So the framework that I'm going to provide you comes with a couple of pre-made classes. So one class is a GUI, which will let you actually see the fire propagate, and that's what makes this picture. Um, this is fun both because it's like fun to look at, but also because it's it makes it easier to check to make sure if your fire is uh, spreading in the way it's supposed to. Um, but the GUI simulator cannot answer your research questions because you can't learn very much just from a single fire. The whole point of Monte Carlo is you want to know on average what's expected to happen. So you need to run thousands and thousands of simulations where you set a random fire, let it burn all the way out, and then measure the results. Um, and you can't do that in the visualizer because it takes too long. So the visualizer, the GUI, is just something there, is like a little fun thing for you. Uh, display window is a helper class used by the display visualizer, and then location is a helper class that represents a single row column as a single object. Um, you can think about it like a data transfer object, although it has a little bit more functionality in it. The classes for you are these two. Simulator, which is the class that you're going to write that lets you initialize your forest, propagate the fire, get information about it. Whatever is happening with the forest needs to be in your simulator. And then the Monte Carlo output class is going to use the simulator um, to run those thousands of experiments, output your data table, and so on. Just a quick reminder about how this works. So before, you had a single method that represented performing your trial. So remember, you're going to loop over a whole bunch of experiments 
you're going to run the experiment and get the results. And then if you're finding an average, for example, you'll add the result into your sum and divide by how many trials. Our simulation is complicated enough now that we probably don't want a single method to do it. We need a whole object to do it. So instead of writing the loop like this, we're going to write a loop that loops for n trials. And then you'll have a simulator object where you'll tell your simulator to initialize with whatever your initial starting conditions are and then to run the full simulation. And then you'll ask the simulator for the results. OK, a couple things you'll sim your simulator will need. The implementation is up to you. Um, but this is my recommendation. My recommendation is you use a two-dimensional int array to represent the trees. Um, and the integer that you use will represent the state that the tree is in. So every tree could be a living tree, a currently burning tree, ash, which means that it's completely burned out, or empty space, which means there's no tree there at all. So an easy thing to do would be to make a bunch of constants. Zero, a zero in the grid, would represent empty space. A 1 in the grid would be a living tree. A 2 in the grid would be a burning tree. And a 3 in the grid would be, a, would be ash. It would be a tree that's completely burned up. So when you propagate the fire, um, if there's a living tree directly next to a burning tree, you could make the living tree change so that it is also a burning tree. If you've got a burning tree, maybe you're going to make the burning tree become ash. Um, so, so that's the idea. You're going to transition from state to state. There's a lot of latitude that you can have for making choices here. So uh, the simplest thing to do would be uh, each of these states lasts one time step. So if you've got a tree that sets on fire, in the very next time step, it's burned out. A more complex situation would be if you wanted to have trees take a certain number of steps before they burn out to ash. A simpler thing to do would be if there's a living tree next to a burning tree, for sure the, the living tree next to the burning tree immediately gets set on fire. Maybe a more realistic thing to do would be to have a certain probability that a living tree next to a burning tree gets set on fire. We'll talk more about what the complexities could be probably on day two or day three once you're a little bit deeper into the framework, but these are things that you can think about. If you want to set yourself up for making a very interesting, flexible situation, um, and you feel like you're, you're sort of more of an advanced programmer, instead of having an int grid, you could make your own tree object, and you could make a two-dimensional array of tree objects. And then encapsulated inside your tree object, you could have a bunch of facts about your different kinds of trees that affect how they burn and how their fire spreads. So back up to the simulator level, you'll have some way of representing your grid of trees. You'll have some way of representing for each location what state is that location in. And then you'll need a method in simulator to initialize your grid with a given tree density. So for example, I'll say create a forest with 5% tree density and you'll create a grid whose size is up to you and make sure that exactly 5% of the grid is full of living trees and the rest is full of empty space. You'll need some way at the end of asking questions at the, of like what happened during your simulation. So you'll need methods that can answer how many trees are burning, how many trees are burned out, how many trees are unburned, how many trees did it have to start with, how many time steps has the fire propagated for, things like that. Um, you can feel free to add whatever help, helper methods you want or even other classes if you want. Just so that there's some level of consistency, though, here's uh, some minimal methods everyone will need to implement. Everybody will need an initialize method, a set fire method, a propagate fire method, and a full run method. Propagate fire spreads the fire just one time step. So in other words, it will spread the fire um, just to each burning tree's immediate neighbors. Full run will be what represents like a complete experiment where you reset your grid, you set the random fire, and you continually propagate the fire until eventually it's completely burned itself out. It's a good idea to have the full run method use some of these other methods, because um, that would be a cleaner implementation. All right, let's shift gears now. I want to make some suggestions for your working process. So. 
you want to make a rough program plan with your partner. Talk through what are all the pieces, where do they need to go. Make sure you get the project framework working. Uh, typically what you do is you start off by giving all of your classes the variables you think they'll need and you'll create all the methods you think they'll need but you don't actually implement the methods. You don't have any of the code that does those things. Instead you're just deciding the what, not the how. So you're going to decide here are all of the methods that I know my simulator needs to do and you'll have them all set up but just with empty comments on the inside. And then you go back and you start actually providing the implementations on the insides. Another really important idea is having a short implement test cycle. So what that means is you want to get some the smallest thing you can working as fast as possible and then figure out what's the next smallest thing you can add to it and then test it and repeat. The reason this is a good idea is because it can cut your debugging time by literally hours and hours and hours. If you implement a whole lot of stuff before you ever test it, it's really hard to know where the bug might be. If you implement little tiny pieces and you test them and you can see if it's working or not, um, whenever there's a bug, you know it has to be in the little tiny piece you just implemented and then it's often much easier to find. So because you're new at this, well, if you were an experienced programmer, you would probably be pretty good at identifying what are these little tiny next steps you could take. Because you're new, I'm going to suggest this for you. I think the first step could be just make sure that you can uh, have a simulator that displays in your, in your GUI, but it has no trees. So can you create a, like an open grid of a particular size that just has empty space? but make sure it displays and runs. Then let's see if you can initialize it with trees. A great intermediate step here would be rather than initialize it with a certain tree density, see if you can just add one tree in a particular spot and have that display because that will make sure that you know that you can add things to the grid and see them. Once you've got that, then try and make a method that will initialize it with the right tree density for yourself. Test it to make sure you can see it and that it works. Make a method that will choose one of the trees and set it on fire, but don't think about spreading the fire yet. Test it and make sure that works. Now write the code that will try and spread the fire just one step. Just spread a fire to its neighbors. Test that and see if that works. Then write the code that will propagate it uh, for many time steps until eventually it's burned out. So hopefully you can see how programming it one little step at a time is going to be an effective working process. Good luck, everybody. There are definitely a couple of implementation pitfalls that I'll bring up, uh, hopefully before you hit them rather than after you hit them. Uh, please fill out your daily work logs. I wish everybody luck.